83. Start my day. Good morning, Eric. Today will be a high of 60, a low of 33, and partly cloudy. You have two calendar events today, with the first starting at 10.30 a.m. You have seven items on your list due today. Now, if you're new here, I'm Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel, all about Apple smart home tech. Today, I wanna to tell you about these new Lutron Serena shades that I just installed in my master bedroom. So maybe you've heard about Lutron Cassetta wireless lighting, but did you know that the company also makes smart shades with their Serena Shades line? When I first went to serenashades.com, I was overwhelmed by all the options, but that can also be a great feature because it can help you find the specific style you're looking for. Now, just like the Lutron switches, you can also order these shades in a non-smart version without the motor or any smarts built in. Uh, so that can be nice if you're trying to fill out a large area with shades and don't need all of them to be smart. Now we'll talk about the pricing differences of these in a little bit. So the main choice you have to make is between the types of shades. You can choose between wood blinds, honeycomb shades, roller shades, or tapping the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help out the channel. Now it's relatively common to find smart versions of roller shades, but I've seen a lot less options, especially compatible with HomeKit, for honeycomb blinds or wood shades. Now, when I first visited the website, I noticed that you could order a sample set for any of the types of shades. So I went ahead and did that for the roller shades and I highly recommend it. It's a great way to be able to get the input of your friends and family on what colors make sense. And you can see the actual fabric or materials in your space with the same lighting and everything. And personally, I don't wanna make any home decorating decisions without first getting sign off from my wife and my mother-in-law. So that might be a good rule for you to follow as well. One other important decision to make is how these shades will be mounted. They can be inside the window frame, on the window frame, or above the window frame. And there are various sizing and spacing requirements for each. Lutron clearly communicates this in their how to measure videos and the measuring guide that comes with the free samples. Now let's fast forward through all the details and I'll just tell you what I ordered, which was battery powered roller shades with blackout fabric and a fabric wrapped fascia on the top with gray end caps. I also added a Lutron Shade Pico remote to my order because I already had the Cassetta Wireless Bridge, so I didn't need one of those. These shades, of course, are compatible with the Cassetta Wireless Bridge you might already have with smart lights. Now, I wanna say a special thanks to Lutron for covering most of the costs for me getting these Serena Shades. If I were to buy them retail, the particular configuration I ordered would be around $1,500. Now, this is expensive and it's a definitely a premium price product, but uh, I think you get what you pay for. It's quality materials. And I wanted to also cover what it would be if I got the same configuration, but without the smarts in it, then you'd be looking at $1,100, which really isn't that huge of a discount. So it is nice that they offer the non-smart options for the various edge cases when you might want that, but I wouldn't consider it to be this gigantic discount. Now, one of the other things you're getting with Lutron is premium reliability. I'm here in my server closet where I actually have my Lutron hub for my Cassetta wireless switches. Now I've been using these switches for years and they're extremely reliable and they use a low frequency wireless signal communicating with the hub that doesn't interfere with other devices. These shades use that same wireless system and seem to perform at the same level of reliability that Lutron has with their smart switches. So again, you pay a little bit more for Lutron, but it tends to be that their products are very reliable. Now, working with Lutron, they wanted me to order these through serenashades.com, their website, and that has the broadest selection of Lutron shades, but you can also get certain of their shades at various retailers, including Lowe's hardware stores here in the US. And there are also options on serenashades.com to connect with a pro installer in your area if that's something you're interested in. When you actually order each shade, you can give a custom name that makes sense to you. The name will be on the packaging for each shade so you know when you're installing which shade goes where. 
Now, once you get the order in, it does take a number of weeks to actually get the shades made and sent to you, depending on any number of variables of what you're ordering. This is a long time for those of us used to free two-day shipping from Amazon or things like that, but at the same time, I've dealt with some other uh, custom blinds in the past, and this kind of time frame seems very in line with my experience. Once I got my shades delivered, there were two main pieces for each shade shade. There's the shade itself and then a metal plate that mounts it to the wall. Now you do have to drill holes in the metal plate depending on the type of mounting you're using. I would have liked to see Lutron go ahead and pre-drill the holes for me, but uh, you know it's probably tough for them to know exactly where you want the holes based on your particular window frame. Now after I drilled the holes in those pieces of metal, the next step was to install those pieces of metal to the frame of my window. The big concern here is that the frame is centered and level, so you want to be sure sure you're doing that now. Lutron also recommends if you have a lot of a curve in your window frame to maybe use some kind of a shim or something else behind the frame to help support it. Uh, in my case, I did have a slight curve on my window frame, but it really wasn't a big deal and I was able to just go without shims. I also went ahead and drilled pilot holes into my frame before I actually put the screws from Lutron through uh, to secure and that seemed to help just make the process easier, especially as one person trying to hold the frame up and get the screws in at the same time. Now, after the piece of metal on the wall, it's all about mounting the shades, which is pretty simple. You just take the shade and lock it into place on the metal and it snaps right in. Then there are some options at the top where you secure it with these extra sliding locks. Uh, and then once that's in, you're good to go and it's time to install the batteries. Now, keep in mind that these shades don't ship with batteries. So in my case, I needed eight D batteries per shade uh, to install them. And so I went ahead and got those in advance of the shades arriving. Now, this is a lot of batteries, but D batteries, from my understanding, have a pretty good shelf life. And they're also uh, rated by Lutron to last about three years inside your shade. So you should get some pretty good life out of this investment in batteries. Now, installing the batteries on my roller shades with the fabric fascia, so some really nice attention to detail. You sort of just bend the uh, fascia down and it exposes the batteries above the shades. So then you just, you know, climb up on a stepping stool or something, pop the batteries in, close it back up, and you're good to go. Now, on the flip side, to be able to achieve this design, uh, they needed to leave like a small gap up there so you can sort of see into the inside of the shade if you're looking on it from above. But I think for most people, that's really not going to be a big deal at all. From there, your shades will take a minute to boot up, and there's a tiny little LED hidden on the bottom of the shades, and that will blink when it's ready to set up. Now you simply open the Lutron app and go through the process there. And if you've already added your Lutron Cassetta Wireless Bridge to HomeKit, once you install the shades in the Lutron app, they'll just show up in HomeKit with the proper room assignments. The other thing you might want to do in the Lutron app after setup is to calibrate the shades. Now, when they come from the factory, they should relatively match the measurements that you specified, but you can make detailed adjustments of what closed and open actually means for the shade. That's because most of the time when you're opening or closing the shades within, let's say, HomeKit or the Lutron app or anywhere else, you're specifying a per percentage open or closed. And so you're just, with calibrating, setting the min and max values for which the percentage moves between. Now, if you're buying these with the goal of taking them with you, moving to another location in the future, you might wanna order the length of the shades depending on your circumstances a little bit longer and then you can calibrate them to be shorter. So, you know, something that's not officially supported, it's not what I tried because I didn't think of this until after I set them up, but it might be worth exploring if you're interested in keeping these shades for longer than just where you live right now. Now, the whole installation process for me took just under two hours. Now, most of that time was just kind of figuring out how to do the metal mounts and actually doing the first window. Once that was done, I flew through installing the second blind and then it was just about setting it up in the app, which 
which is also pretty straightforward. I've been using these shades for a couple days and I've been very impressed with the performance uh, in using them with Siri shortcuts, using them inside the home app and setting various scenes, as well as using the Pico remote I installed on my wall. We had an outlet switch on our wall and I went ahead and closed off that outlet so it's always on and used that spot in the wall to install the Pico remote for the blinds. One detail that Lutron brags about in their marketing is that the shades are able to stay in sync as they move up and down. Uh, and I noticed this to be exactly right. I'm, I'm really impressed and I imagine that that's a very hard detail to get right. Now I ordered roller shades with blackout fabric and the light does not come through the actual fabric, but because they're mounted on the frame, there is a small gap on either side of the roller shade but that where light can come through. I imagine this would be a lot better scenario if the shade was able to be mounted inside the window frame. Uh, my window frames were not deep enough to support this. And you could probably work with a professional to work out the details and maybe make it a little closer. So of course, smart shades add a really cool wow factor to any room in your home. But beyond that, they can also help save you money and energy. Chances are one of the biggest energy costs you have is heating and cooling your home. And the sun shining through your windows does play a pretty big role in that. So you can uh, create automatic schedules within let's say HomeKit that at certain times a day, the blinds will open or close. And of course, you don't even have to be there for that to happen. Happen. Speaking of not being there or leaving the home, you could also set up some kind of automations for, uh, let's say you want the blinds to open or shut at various times to make it appear as if you're home even when you're not. Like many pieces of smart home tech, there are a lot of different ways you can use automation to meet your specific family's needs. Now, if you wanna learn how to set up a good bedtime routine in HomeKit for you or your family, I recently made a video on how I've done that here. Uh, you can check that out. It's linked here somewhere on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Apple smart home content. If that's something you're into, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really does help the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.